welcome back and in today's video we are going to explore about one of the most important aspects in knee biomechanics and in even in total biomechanics that is the locking and unlocking of the knee a topic which many of you had waited eagerly or a topic some of you would have seen as a nightmare or locking and unlocking i cannot do it here we are going to explore that in the most simplified manner so that by end of this discussion you don't memorize it but you get it in your mind forever the locking and unlocking of the knee we have a strategy of discussion that we will focus on coupled motions initially and then move on to locking and unlocking of the knee but if you are someone who is thorough with coupled motion and wish to know only about the locking and unlocking of the knee i have included the time codes in the description and comment box you can just check on to that let us examine locking and unlocking of the knee in detail Yes, the locking and unlocking of the knee comes under the topic known as the coupled motions. So, as we have a strategy, our strategy here focuses on understanding what is coupled motion, which I believe is a key role, which I believe has a key role in understanding locking and unlocking. Coupled motion means a motion that occur in one axis. that motion occur consistently with another axis or in association with a motion happening in another axis so that you mean that is what you mean by coupled motion that means a motion that is occurring in one axis it consistently associated with another motion that is happening in another axis for example a motion that is happening in x axis is consistently associated with a motion that is happening in y axis and this both occur together as a pair then such motions are known as coupled motions right in vertebral column we have lateral flexion and rotation as a coupled motion it because it occurs Togetherly and both of them are in two different plane, but happens together. But why do we discuss coupled motion in knee joint? There you need to look into a brief anatomy of the knee joint. Right here, this is the femur, medial epicond, medial condyle, and lateral condyle. When you look the medial condyle and lateral condyle, you can clearly see that the medial condyle is more distal than the lateral condyle. Okay. even in this picture it can be very clearly seen that is the medial condyle is bit down and distal than the lateral condyle of the femur so first point that you need to get into your mind the medial condyle is slightly distal than the lateral condyle now this creates a physiological valgus at the knee joint which we discussed when we were de describing about the genu valgum varum the axis the longitudinal axis the longitudinal axis through the tibia making a medial angulation the physiological valgus so this uh, distal association of the medial condyle creates a physiological valgus at the knee joint no need to go in depth to this now let us understand what is the coupled motion with the help of our elbow right this is the elbow this is the forearm this is arm and forearm now you see when you look at this way you see that the forearm the arm is arranged like this and forearm is slightly lateral to that you can see that right this is because of this angulation similarly you have an angulation in the femur right yes very good here you see that the forearm is slightly lateral to the body slightly lateral to the midline right now that is the first thing now you can see this wonder you can go from extension to flexion 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 look closely look closely see this this becomes finally in a line right that is from the extension which was laterally oriented to the flexion to the mid of the flexion the forearm is coming to the midline of the body so forearm is coming to the midline of the body right very good 
the forearm is coming to the mid line of the body do you want it to uh, do you want one more demonstration let us do it okay all of you just you can try with me that would be good see this is the angulation and this is very simply you can show this due to this angulation this is slightly tilted laterally and in this point you can see that when you are going from this flexion uh, extension to the flexion when flexion increase finally this becomes in a straight line that means from lateral deviation or lateral movement or abduction to it is coming into the center of the body right that is in your elbow and now here in your knee joint which is our consideration we have the same valgus angulation and due to that you can see this this is the longitudinal axis of the femur which is obliquely oriented and see the orientation of the tibia this is bit lateral now what happens here when it is moving from extension to flexion so let us attempt the same one we are moving from look closely now the team tibia is a bit lateral now from here from flexure extension to flexion when we are moving like this you see that the tibia comes in association with the femur or come into the medial plane of the body or the midline of the body more clearly you want to see then just let us look at the posterior view see this one right see this one the tibia is a bit laterally oriented okay you can see this this one now when it is moving for flexion now it is attempting for flexion you can see that flexion 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 yes very good it is coming into the midline of the body so here what happens the flexion is accompanied by movement to the midline movement towards the inwards that is the varus yes that is the coupled motion that is knee flexion is accompanied by varus or abduction movement knee flexion is accompanied by varus or abduction movement that is the coupled motion here now what happens from when we move from uh, the same flexion to extension now we are moving from flexion to extension you see this is in midline now from extension it goes 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 and finally in extension it again becomes a laterally oriented that means knee extension is combined by extension is linked to valgus orientation see this extension is linked to valgus orientation you know that flexion and extension is actually happening in which plane that is in the sagittal plane varus and valgus is actually happening abduction and adduction is actually happening in frontal plane you see an association with sagittal plane with the frontal plane that is why we call it coupled motion or the axis of the sagittal plane that is x axis or the axis of the frontal plane that is ap axis these are constantly associated and this is what we call the coupled motion and the first coupled motion in the knee joint is knee flexion with varus and knee extension with valgus this mainly happens because you see one more thing we have to look the axis for flexion and extension the plane of flexion and extension is sagittal plane the axis would be x axis we studied earlier that the axis is a trans epicondylar axis but we also described it as a horizontal one absolutely that is not correct huh? it's not correct yes it's not correct because it was an over simplification to understand the things the axis is exactly speaking the axis is an oblique one from this epicondyle to the, this one the axis is slightly an oblique one if it is a straight line this should be in the x axis if it is an obliquely oriented see it is in y axis it has some component in the z axis that means the sagittal plane movement is not occurring purely in the sagittal plane it is having a frontal plane movement and it is having a transverse plane movement did you understand this even if you did not get this one this doesn't matter you just have to get this picture once again let let me explain this one to you see we have a trans epicondylar axis like this which we thought is a straight line but it is an obliquely oriented because of this obliquity of the femur as well as the epicondyle differences okay now this is an oblique oriented axis 
if this axis was a straight line it is purely in x axis so the moment of flexion and extension should happen only in the sagittal plane now this movement is not in the x axis but it is in the axis is slightly away from the x axis so it is having a some component of y axis which is a vertical axis and an ap axis so this is actually linked to all that that means the flexion will not happen along in the sagittal plane but will happen in the axis in which it is more oriented that is in the frontal plane or sagittal plane flexion will be combined with the frontal plane or x-axis flexion will be combined with ap axis and we have here the first coupled motion of the knee joint let us examine once more the coupled motion okay this is easy to understand but let us examine once more the coupled motion that means you see this one you see this one now see you can simply illustrate you simply understand this tibia is having a little bit of lateral orientation right a little bit of lateral orientation that is mainly because of your valgus over here right this is going to if there is no valgus over here it would have been straight line but valgus over here and obliquity of the femur this oblique orientation is creating a valgus over the uh, a slight lateral movement now you see from this extension when the femur is moving to tpi is moving to flexion this laterally oriented becomes the midline to the midline of the body that means from lateral orientation it is coming to the medial orientation or the varus right or the varus so flexion is accompanied by the flexion is accompanied by varus see here finally if we have if we have a 180 degree flexion this would have become completely in a straight line but we only have 180 degree of flexion right so the flexion is accompanied by virus movement and extension is accompanied by valgus movement the example this one is most easy to illustrate or visualize see this one virus valgus and coming to flexion associated with virus that is the first coupled motion in the knee joint but that's not our point of interest. Our point of interest is the screw home mechanism or locking and unlocking of the knee. Now we want to look into the second coupled motion in the knee joint. The second coupled motion in the knee joint. That is flexion is accompanied by flexion and extension is accompanied by lateral rotation and medial rotation now let us see how this is going to happen in our knee joint right for this we need to take into tibia into consideration can you just look at this articular surface of the tibia the medial condyle over here lateral condyle or medial plateau and lateral plateau what is the difference between medial and lateral plateau just look at this articular surface can you denote or can you differentiate any difference the difference is that this is larger than this articular surface that is a medial articular surface as a greater surface area than the lateral articular surface can you just just look at this don't look at this mass just look at that articular surface all right that means your medial tibial plateau is having a larger diameter or larger articulation articular surface than your lateral tibial plateau now let us see this one now this is a non-weight bearing condition that means your tpi is moving we fix this team femur okay all right now this typical motion is going to happen in the last 30 degree of flexion not in complete degree of flexion but in last 30 degree of flexion so let us take a last 30 degree of knee flexion so last 30 degree of flexion to extension that is from this 30 to 0 degree extension is pure extension is 0 degree or 180 degree so that 30 to 0 degree okay now there is a biomechanical change or a there is an anatomical change that is happening over here what is that okay here you see this one is larger this one is smaller in last 30 degree of knee flexion in last 30 degree of knee flexion you see that the medial tibial condyle 
and the medial femoral condyle and lateral tibial condyle and lateral femoral condyle when this is going for tibia what is happening for tibia it is rolling and gliding anteriorly see this this is extension flexion is accompanied by rolling and gliding anteriorly since it is a tibia moving both will be in the same direction concave on convex right yes here when tibia is moving in this direction you see that this articular surface is very small so what happens this articular surface will finish over this articular surface very fastly than this one see this one see this one when you have it like this when you have this like this okay this is the last 30 degree of flexion okay now in this last 30 degree it is going for extension 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 you see what is happening here in the medial tibial condyle you have a greater surface area left over but in lateral tibial condyle it is almost complete that means in lateral tibial condyle there is no more motion that is possible but in your medial tibial condyle, sorry, medial tibial plateau, there is actually a greater degree of surface area left over for this rolling to happen. So this medial tibial condyle will continue rolling and gliding anteriorly. In this fixed lateral condyle, the lateral condyle will act as the pivot. Okay, in last 30 degree, when the motion in the lateral condyle is over like this when the motion in the lateral condyle is over the lateral condyle will act as a pivot and medial condyle has a lot of surface area left over so last 30 degree typically last 5 degree of extension the medial condyle will rotate around this the medial condyle will rotate around this lateral condyle as a pivot this rotation that is a lateral rotation this rotation that is extension combined with lateral rotation is known as automatic rotation or terminal location and that is what your screw home mechanism or locking of the knee is it clear no no we will do it again right let us do it again see here this one is larger this one is smaller so naturally by basic common sense we can understand that this much this will roll greater this will roll lesser now femur is fixed you cannot move that femur okay now from the last 30 degree of flexion from the last 30 degree of extension to flexion okay when up to 20 25 degrees over you can just see this in the medial side you have a greater gap but in the lateral side you have a very less gap that means lateral side has almost completed its rotation or its rolling and gliding anteriorly it cannot roll and glide now the medial condyle can roll and glide anteriorly it can roll and glide anteriorly it can roll and glide anteriorly see it can roll and glide, glide anteriorly not posteriorly if it is posterior this should go for medial rotation but this is going for rolling and gliding anteriorly so this is going for rolling and gliding anteriorly so that finally a complete articulation is uh, achieved this is done on this lateral condyle which is acting as a pivot this motion that is the terminal extension is combined with the lateral rotation see the beauty of this one see the beauty of this this comes in contact this is known as the locking of the knee that is the terminal extension of the knee joint is combined by lateral rotation of the tibia lateral rotation of the tibia under femoral condyles is known as the locking of the knee why locking because at this point we all the capsular ligament structures all the structures in the knee joint are tight and this is a closed back position of the knee joint so that becomes a knee joint in a locked position or more correctly your screw home mechanism what is your screw screw is something like this it's going to act like this okay it is going to how do you screw one thing you are going to screw it like this okay similarly this lateral condyle this is going to be a pivot and this is going to act like a screw this is the screw home mechanism this is the screw home mechanism or lateral rotation i am exaggerating it do not uh, think that this is happening this much it's not happening this much but i am exaggerating it what is that in the last 30 degree of extension especially in the last 5 degree when the tibial condyle on the lateral side has completed its rotation the medial tibial condyle will roll and glide anteriorly rotating 
me laterally over the fixed lateral condyle rotating you can see this one down what happening here what is happening in the downside here you see that this is like this and when it comes over here this is going like this it's going for rotating laterally see this one this movement this is the screw home movement or the locking of the knee right so that is why we call it as a screw home mechanism or locking of the knee right have you got the picture that is locking of the knee is the knee extension most correctly the terminal extension is combined with lateral rotation of tibia lateral rotation of the tibia this is known as the locking of the knee or automatic rotation or terminal rotation terminal rotation or screw home mechanism why it is locked because all the capsular ligament structures all the muscles everything are in its perfect alignment or in its perfectly taut position that is why we call that position as a locked position of the knee joint right now what happens in unlocking what happens in flexion can you imagine this one see this one is like a locked position okay this one is something like this this is locked now this cannot move for flexion as you lock a door even if you unlock even if uh, if you don't unlock it what happens you cannot open the door similarly this is in locked position this has to be unlocked right without unlocking this will not go for flexion it cannot go for flexion so what happens during initiation of the flexion the medial tibial condyle will rotate medially the medial tibial condyle will rotate medially so the flexion is associated by so initiation of the flexion is associated by movement of the medial tibial condyle mean medial rotation or medial rotation of the tibia right so you know that this is in locked position that is in the lateral rotation so this is locked there is no flexion going to happen in this position you can imagine this one it is not going to happen it has to come in normal position for that this knee has to go for a slight media rotation wow very good now it can go for the flexion this is known as the unlocking of the knee so unlocking of the knee that is the flexion is accompanied by media rotation and uh, studies shows that um, popliteus muscle which is a muscle attached from lateral tibial condyle lateral femoral condyle into the tibia is responsible for initiating this medial rotation but more clearly study so we call popliteus as unlocking muscle but more clear studies says that uh, actually even if you have your popliteus paralyzed unlocking is going to happen why because that is a responsibility of this oblique orientation that is the function of this anatomy that is the function of the surface area and all so it will happen without your voluntary muscle contraction that is why we call it as automatic contraction so latest studies says that even if your popliteus muscle is not going to work even if it is paralyzed the unlocking can take place right so I don't want to uh, be uh, controversial on that. Let us uh, take into consideration that uh, popliteus muscle is the unlocking muscle. Do I need to explain once more the locking and unlocking? Yes, let us do it one more. So locking and unlocking means not only this much. That is during the last 30 degree of flexion. Always remember during the last 30 degree of extension. During the last 30 degree of extension, the shorter tibial compile plateau will continue or will finish its extension. You can see this will finish its rolling and gliding. But the larger tibial condyle medial side has not completed. So this will continue rolling anteriorly and laterally. This will continue rolling and gliding anteriorly. This rolling and gliding in association with the tibial condyle, femoral condyle produce the lateral rotation of the tibia. See this one lateral rotation of the tibia around this lateral condyle as the pivot. So you can imagine this one. This is actually Acting as a pivot and this is rotating like this this extension or terminal extension combined with the lateral rotation is known as the locking of the knee or unlocking uh, term, uh, terminal rotation or automatic rotation or the screw hole mechanism this is acting like a screw this is acting like a screw all right 
I hope that is clear. That is the basics about a screw form mechanism. Now, we saw that screw form mechanism in flexion uh, in non-weight bearing condition. Non-weight bearing. So non-weight bearing locking means locking means that is the extension is combined with the lateral rotation. Okay. And flexion is combined with the medial rotation of tibia. Here tibia is your moving. Whereas in weight bearing, things is going to change. Your tibia cannot move, right? Your tibia cannot move in weight bearing. Only possibility is your femur to move. So let us examine what happens in weight bearing locking and unlocking of the knee. Right? So we have here, that is the medial tibial condyle, lateral tibial condyle, medial, sorry, medial femoral condyle, lateral femoral condyle, medial tibial plateau, lateral tibial plateau. Now what is happening? That is from, remember, the knee is fixed. That is the tibia is fixed, only femur moves from last 30 degree of extension, from flexion to extension. You can see this, the smaller tibial condyle on the lateral condyle completes its rolling and gliding completes its rolling and gliding but the lateral tip the medial tibial condyle has not completed it and you know that this is convex on concave so for extension to happen the rolling and gliding should happen posteriorly the opposite the rolling and gliding will happen opposite if rolling is on to this direction the gliding will be on the opposite direction so what happens here what happens remember that so we, this is going for extension like this and like this like this like this at last 30 degree the lateral condyle has almost completed it now medial condyle has something left over so what happens to complete that this will go for this one roll upwards and slide glide posteriorly rolling and gliding that is what rotation of the tibia what rotation of the femur see that is to the medial direction medial rotation of the femur that is in weight bearing locking is characterized by extension combined with medial rotation of tibia the x femur the x at opposite and flexion is combined by lateral rotation of femur, right? Do I need to explain this once more? I think so, I should, right? Let us do it once more, okay? So, uh, remember in your mind, these things you might not get in the textbook, that is you are going for an extension from the you know, weight bearing position. And here you have the convex one on the concave convex on the concave the rolling and gliding should occur oppositely this i am making it easy for you that's why i'm telling that okay otherwise i can just turn the movement okay here you're going for extension like this from flexion the lateral condyle has almost completed it see the lateral condyle has completed it now the medial condyle should finish this extension then only you have the complete extension the locking happens for a complete extension so what happens here the medial condyle is rolling upwards but it should glide posteriorly not anteriorly if it is gliding anteriorly this should produce here lateral rotation but it is going to glide posteriorly see this one this is acting like a screw over here this is acting like a uh, locking mechanism over here see this one this one uh, look at the upper end of the femur Look at the upper end of the femur. What is happening? It is going for medial rotation. That is, extension is characterized by rolling anteriorly and gliding posteriorly or simply the medial rotation of the femur on the tibia. So, in weight bearing condition, the fem tibia is fixed. That is, you are standing now. When you are going from squatting position to getting up, this is what happening. The femur is rotating, medial rotation, going for medial rotation in extension, right? Whereas in flexion, what happens? The exact opposite happens. The exact opposite happens. The exact opposite happens. That is inflection. For flexion, what happened? This is how the flexion is initiated. So this should go for a lateral rotation. So flexion in weight bearing condition is characterized by lateral rotation. Once again, I'll show you that. Once again, I'll show you that. I just got some itching in the eye. That is, uh, so this is the extension position. So go for going for flexion, this is locked position. This femur should go, the medial condyle should go for a lateral rotation. And 
a lateral rotation like this and then flexion will be initiated so this lateral rotation the flexion is accompanied by see this is the position flexion is accompanied by lateral rotation of the femur and that is known as the unlocking of the knee in weight bearing position so that is what we discovered about one of the most simplest aspects in the knee joint or sometimes some of us call it as a complex aspect that is a screw home mechanism two conditions in weight bearing position non weight bearing position you just have to explain it or just look into the pictures or videos once again to understand it in extension position what is happening the tibia is going for lateral rotation in um, weight bearing position what is happening the femur is going for medial rotation exact opposite you just have to understand and study one then you can just simply write it in your examination or in your daily life okay that's all about the logging and unlocking of the knee complex and with this we wind up this session on locking and unlocking of the knee complex and next we are going to the mechanics and pathomechanics of muscles in the knee complex in the next video until then stay tuned and if you like this video don't forget to click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you in the next video